Hey everybody and welcome to the Big Recon on Sports Mets Week in Review coming to you Monday, April the 15th, 2019. Tax day. Also, the start of another long week for the Mets. I'm sorry, I know I said I'd be doing this on Sundays, but I was up last night watching the ESPN broadcast of the Met game. I highly recommend no one ever does that. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball has fallen so far off. If you see me look this way every now and again, the Mets are on right now against Philadelphia. It's 5-5. Uh, going into the fifth inning, Syndergaard and Nola have both been iffy at best. So let's start with last week. And the Mets opened their week on Tuesday night after a Monday day off of the long weekend against Washington against interleague rival the Minnesota Twins. Maybe rival's not the word. But the Twins came into City Field and they put a beating on the Mets on Tuesday night. Jacob deGrom's streak of 26 consecutive scoreless uh, quality starts was broken on Tuesday by those twins who hit five bombs in that game. An insane amount of home runs been flying out of City Field. Pete Alonso hit two on Tuesday night. The Mets fell by six in DeGrom's worst start since the beginning of last year. Really since the night Terry Collins put his arm around him a couple of years ago. So the week wasn't off to the greatest start. Well, the next night, Thor picked his buddy up, and the Mets beat Minnesota 9-6. More issues with the bullpen late in the game. Syndergaard didn't go as deep as, uh, or went pretty deep, but then they kind of fell apart for a little bit. Tacked on late, got the W. The offense has really picked this pitching up so far this year, and there was no bigger example than Wednesday night. So the Mets split their two-game series with Minnesota. Um, good start to the week. You lose bad one night, you got to win the next night, and that's exactly what they did. Which brought us to Thursday, and we're going to spend some time on this series because this is in Atlanta, a four-game series against the Braves. On the first game of the series, you had Zach Wheeler going in near his hometown, and the Mets get a 6-3 win. Excuse me, Stephen Matz went that night. Now I remember. Matt, they switched Matz and Wheeler in the rotation to break up the lefty. So Matsy went on Thursday, and he was brilliant. Uh, he pitched deep into the game. He struck out eight, did not allow a run. Again, the Mets had issues with the bullpen getting guys out. But they get the win 6-3, another big night for a Mets young offensive player. But this time it wasn't just Alonzo, but we'll get to him in a minute. Ahmed Rosario had a huge night, a three-run homer early in the game. He drove in the fourth run with a base hit later. Uh, he is starting to come into his own. This guy is why they didn't go after Manny Machado. They have Alonzo, they have Rosario, they have Conforto and Nimmo. These guys are ready to play, and they're going to contribute big time. Um, right now it's the yep fifth inning, 5-5 five, five in Philadelphia. Um, so Rosario did the heavy lifting on Thursday night. The Mets win the opener against Atlanta down in Atlanta at SunTrust Park. Hopefully it's not the little shop of horrors that Turner Field was for the Mets for all those years. So now we move to Friday. In the aforementioned Zach Wheeler start, another great start by a young starter. The Mets win 6-2. to two. Wheeler brings that ERA down, which he had the one bad outing, so it was way up there. He's starting to round into form. Now in this game, the offensive stars, it was well-rounded. Um, with Pete Alonso being the guy. Here's what I mean when I say Pete Alonso is the guy. He hit a ball on a line 455 feet to dead center field in Atlanta, splashing down in the batter's eye fountain they have out there. The ball was staying straight. This wasn't coming down. This was not a fly ball. This was an absolute rocket off the bat of Pete Alonzo. It was, I believe, since they started charting this, the fifth hardest hit ball in the stat cast era. The only guys who have hit balls harder than this are named Stanton and Judge. And those two dudes are humongous. And all they do is bash home runs, strike out a lot. Alonzo hasn't done that much. He's starting to dip a little in the swing, but I think he's getting a little too home run happy. When he gets back to that line drive swing that Hernandez absolutely adores, uh, I believe he will turn this around. 
But the Mets get a 6-2 win on Friday night in Atlanta, taking the first two games against the defending division champions. This is what this team needs to do. They need to get into first place and use their pitching to give them a lead and keep it there. Then we go to Saturday. And it's the Jason Vargas experiment. The best part of this game was that Vargas didn't last long. Oh, that's right. He lasted a third of an inning. He got one out. He threw like 40 pitches. He got one out. Now, I learned something on Friday night, or Saturday night, excuse me. FS1, my Fox Sports app on my TV, doesn't black out local games if they're the national game of the week. So I got to watch the Mets on Saturday night. Uh, and listen. Tip of the cap, not there's much hair there, to Atlanta reliever Tukey Tucson, who was phenomenal Saturday night. Six innings of sco scoreless relief. They didn't score again until after he left the game. Um, the and big story again Saturday night was that Vargas couldn't get it done. But here was my favorite part of the whole thing. The Mets went down 4 nothing after the first inning. And what did this team do? They put up a four spot in the second. And they showed me, at least on Saturday night, and I sent a text to my father, I, this team makes me smile. Now, they didn't get the win, and you're not going to win every night that you have to do this. But putting up that four spot in the second inning and getting right back in this game was huge. They chased Newcomb, Atlanta starter, very quickly. The problem was you had Corey Oswalt pitching in relief. Um, a lot of the Mets' depth issues were on center stage that night. Um, so now we're two, one in the series going into the Sunday night game, Jacob deGrom against Julio Tehran, which really wasn't as great as advertised deGrom with his second consecutive non, uh, quality start. Um, here, a lot of speculation. Oh, it's Darno's fault. It's this one. It's that one. I watched Jake last night. Now, I pitched, and of course, it wasn't anywhere near the level these guys are. But one thing on me personally that I really focused on when I was a player was my mechanics. And I always knew if I was throwing a, trying to throw a pitch too hard, it almost looks like he's trying to throw the slider too hard. He's getting it up to 95, but it's starting to level out instead of that snap dip he's always had on it. He gave up a bomb to Josh Donaldson which you're talking about a former Hall of Famer or a former MVP or excuse me. Um, this guy still knows how to hit. So, of course, the Met bullpen, which is not built for this, had to go long distance again. Robert Kostelman gave up a few runs, including a home run to Nick Markinkis that I don't think has landed yet. Um, so the Mets end up splitting their series in Atlanta to drop them to second place in the National League East. Uh, a half a game behind Philadelphia, where they are now for four. So the next week for the Mets coming up is going to be a big week, especially with the end of the first month of the season coming. In Philly for the next three. I'll go right to my calendar since it's loaded in there. So in Philly for the next three, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, third Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's only three in Philly. And then they come home on the 19th, or then they go to St. Louis at the end of this week. Uh, so you're going to get playoff caliber team after playoff caliber team at this part in, in the schedule. It is not an easy schedule to start the season. Seeing the Nationals twice, then going to Atlanta, then having to play the Phillies, then in St. Louis, home for the Phillies. Um, Milwaukee comes into town, the defending Central Division champions. And then they play Cincinnati at home, who is an up-and-coming team to end the month of April. So we are almost through the first month of baseball here in uh, the 2019 season. I can't really complain. They, they're they over 500. they They're in the hunt right now. Let's see how it moves forward from here. Tonight in Philadelphia, Aaron Nola and Noah Syndergaard have not nearly been as good as 
they normally are. Syndergaard gave up a huge home run to Michael Franco, but then again, he's gotten Bryce Harper out twice. So that concludes week two of our weekly Mets updates here on the Big Reek and on sports. We're going to come back again next Sunday, and it'll actually be next Sunday night because, my God, they play a day game on Sunday. So happy Easter, everybody. Get you early. I just uploaded our 2018-2019 Cleveland Cavaliers wrap-up show to Google, Spotify, Breaker, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, and I'll have it up on SoundCloud in just a little bit. Look at the Big Recon Sports Facebook page for all the details on everything. Have a great weekend. Let's go Mets.